box? Yes. Awesome. So this sandbox, again, is a fully pre-populated trial account. This allows you to understand what a fully fleshed out account can look like, especially if you're a new user. It may look a little overwhelming going in and seeing a fully blank account that you need to go in and fill in everything. This gives you the opportunity to see what critical numbers look like when they're already created, what a huddle looks like when it's already being utilized, understanding how you can use that functionality to your team's full potential. So within a line, you have multiple opportunities to seek help, get answers to your questions, either through our pre-created uh, resources, or you also have your contact us button. So because I am using a sandbox account today, you'll see that at the bottom left corner of my screen, it says tour menu. In your actual account, it will say contact us because you are a paid for account. You already have access to our customer success advisors. This will automatically link to you to the customer success advisor that is connected to your account, making sure that they get a support ticket saying, this person needs help. Make sure in the description, you give us the most information that you can. If you're running into an issue, if you're curious about a, a certain feature or the way that feature works, give us as much detail as you can in that description. That will send us an automatic support case. Uh, each of your customer success advisors will already be assigned the correct cases. And then we usually answer those between 12 and 48 hours. They are part of our highest priority in our day. So let's say you're on a different time zone from us. It may be that we don't wake up for another few hours or that your morning is our evening or our evening is your morning. We have some pre-created resources available to you to make sure that you know where you can find help. So if you see in this right-hand corner next to your profile and your announcements button, you have your question mark. This question mark leads you to our help and FAQ page. This allows you to search for help. So if I need help with my huddles, I'm going to type in the keyword and it's going to show me all of the information that I have in the software about how I can utilize that feature. I can have, if I'm curious about customizing my huddle, how do I add a user to an existing huddle? I can click on any of these links and then it's going to give me just a basic brief how to of how to utilize that feature or how to execute that action. Let's say I've gone through all of these things and I'm still a little confused. I would like more information and I, I, I am not getting exactly what I need. You also have a link to our Align Academy. Oh, there we go. Sorry about that. My internet connection went out for a second. Um, so in our Align Academy, you have the ability to search for and see a huge variety of resources that we have created for you about utilizing Align, its best practices, uh, multiple different opportunities to sign up for, like our office hours today, free trainings. In this left-hand navigation column, you'll see resources on how to execute the plan you've created for yourself, how to create strategy within Align, the culture that we have available, uh, the culture tool culture tools that are available within the Align software. If you have onboarding resources, we have the ability to show you as a new user and you're just getting started, here's some great information for you to know. We also, as you continue training and need support within the tool, this training and support section offers you a lot of other opportunities. Again, coached webinars, our weekly newsletter, our CS weekly updates, uh, this Align office hours to join for free giving you a little bit more in-depth information if you need a little bit of help right now and your customer success advisor is not available. Any questions about our help and FAQ section, how you get help in a line, how you reach your personal customer success advisor? Awesome. Well, I'm going to get started here. So today we are talking about annual initiatives. Annual initiatives are going to be found under your strategy tab. So again, there's two navigation bars in a line. You have your left-hand navigation, your day-to-day -day items, and then your higher level strategy is going to be up here in this top level navig navigation. Under your strategy tab, you've got your one-page strategic plan. Your one-page strategic plan is a one-page document of where your company is trying to go and how they plan on getting there. So from your foundation of who you are as a company, your core values, your purpose, the big, hairy, audacious goal, where you're trying to get in that next 10, 15, 20 years, and then breaking that down into your three to five year thresholds, what you need to hit, the goals that you need to achieve to get to those larger goals, and then you get to your one year section.
So we're going to be focusing mainly on the one year today. Of course, as I go through, if you have questions, you can pop them in the chat, you can pop them in the Q&A, or you're more than welcome to come off mute and use your real human voice, and I will be happy to address those. Feel free to interrupt me at any time. So in your one year section, to uh, give myself ease of scrolling, you can either expand and see everything all at once, or you can collapse all of them and then just click on the one section that you'd like to focus on. So today I've got my goals, my one year goals. So this is just saying, what am I trying to achieve this year? This gives you a nice little easy to view uh, understanding of the goals that you've set out for the year. That means this is, the, the targets and the thresholds that I'm trying to hit. So the category of year ending, this is the year that we're in, the annual revenue that I'd like to hit by the end of the year, the profit, the opportunities that we are creating for new revenue or new opportunities. These are going to be easy to edit by clicking into that section. I can add new ones by adding a new item. I can delete them over here. I can also edit them and change them as needed. Now you'll notice that in the line, there is an owner for almost every single thing. This is going to make sure that your team has accountability for people keeping those things updated and accurate. Now, of course, your team is working together to achieve these goals. So Tom is not the only person responsible for the revenue in our company, but he is responsible for making sure that that one year target, that one year goal is being consistently act, uh, <clears throat> consistently and accurately updated, as well as making sure that the projected or where we're trying to go, our goal target is actually realistic. So quarter over quarter, as we have our planning sessions, we consistently look back over these uh, annual goals and we say, are we actually setting achievable goals for ourselves? If by Q2, we've only hit 2 million, is it really reasonable that we're going to be able to hit 9 million by the end of the year? Is there information that we know is coming up in this next quarter that we may be doubling what we did, or it might be a really, really low quarter if we're in, um, you know, a recession or something like that. We can always change and edit these based on need. I do see that we have a few questions in the chat. In the actuals column, how do you know what the numbers in that column cover exactly? I come into the section, I don't even remember when I added these numbers. In other words, what does actuals mean? Great question, Julian. So these actuals are going to be updated based off of where you are right now. So with your Yes, exactly, Alexander. Essentially, this is your current value at the moment. So <clears throat> you can with your team discuss how often you wanna update these. We here at Align usually update these once a quarter because we have our quarterly planning session where we come in and make sure before that meeting, either the day before, maybe the week before, the owner of that number is gonna come in and they're gonna give us the actual number right now. Now that may change, you know, every day, new revenues coming in, new revenues going out. There's, there's a, a little bit of a fluctuation there, but with your team, you can either create a task in a line, you can create a, a personal reminder or a priority that gives people kind of a concrete date saying, make sure that you update your annual targets or your annual goals before our next meeting. So that's gonna be based off of kind of the cadence that your team meets. If you meet weekly, if you meet monthly, if you've got quarterly planning sessions with a coach or something like that, I highly suggest making sure that you have either within a line or just understanding within your team, accountability of when these numbers get updated. They don't necessarily have a cadence to themselves. So you can update them at any time as an administrator in the system. But please remember that an administrator can update an change the information in your one page plan. As a regular user, unless I'm the owner of that number, I'm not physically able to edit these things. So if I am a regular user and I don't see this administration tab up here, I can look and see what our goals are. I can visibly pay attention to and be up to date on this information, but I'm not gonna be able to edit them like an administrator would be. So if you have an owner that says, I am not able to edit this, it's not letting me, it's just letting me view it, make sure that they are given administrative access so that they can have fuller utilization of the tool. Hey Great Carly, I'm not, I'm not seeing the the section on the right that has the, the three icons on mine. It just says projected actuals and owner name. I'm not seeing those. 
Uh, uh, expand your screen a little bit, Bill. Is your screen at full screen? I think so, yeah. It's all the way open. Can you scroll over to the right or the left? No, I can't. There's no scrolling or anything. In your oh, view, I, are no, you under actual it, size? No, I have to click on the I have to click on the section to so unlock. these are gonna show up. That's a great question. So when you click save, this is just showing you the information. If you would like to edit it, just click into that section and then it'll show you the ability to edit those different items. Yeah, yeah. You needed to click into the section. That was the trick. Great question. Any questions on these annual goals before we get into key initiatives? Awesome. So once you know where you're trying to get by the end of the year, now you need to actually put some work into how you're going to achieve those goals. So the difference between the actual goal that you've set out, that goal is generally a KPI, something that you're trying to hit, a key performance indicator that's going to tell you what is the success of this goal that we're trying to put out for ourselves. Whereas your key initiatives is how you plan on getting there. In this initiative, it's great that I want to have uh, an annual revenue of $9 million, but if I don't have the people in place to get that done, I'm not going to, realistically, my team of three is not going to be able to make me $9 million. I need probably six to 10 people on my team to achieve that goal, just a hypothetical. So that means that I need a hiring and onboarding process plan in place to fill the open positions that I need to hire to be able to get to that annual revenue that I'm trying to hit. So think of these as the thresholds you're trying to hit and think of these as the action plan of how you're going to get there. So in my key initiatives, I have a hiring and onboarding plan and process that I need to fill out. If I click on here, I'm going to expand this to see my annual initiatives. So now you'll see that it's taken me out of my strategy tab, and I'm now in my annual initiatives page on the left-hand side. This is just giving you a fuller view. So your strategy tab, you can add these annual initiatives in there, and then under your annual initiatives page, it's giving you that full view to show I have priorities every quarter. So from the last this current quarter, I have five priorities that are attached. In the previous quarter, I also had some priorities or I had the ability to add priorities that we were working on this annual initiative. So as we continue on throughout the year, I have the ability to connect the projects I'm working on quarter over quarter to show that I'm putting work towards this annual initiative. Yes, I believe, Jamie, did you raise your hand? Hi, I was wondering, is there any way I can drill down to the child priorities here, or do I have to go from the priority section to go look for them? Like so, the, the second one, there's a child priority number one there, and then. So you'll see there's four child priorities yeah, underneath oh, this. Yeah. So this is showing you that this is a company priority. It's going to give you this information saying you're 67% complete for this. But yes, you will. And correct me if I'm wrong, Alexander, but you do have to go to your priorities page on the left-hand side to see all of the details of that specific priority. So if I've got multiple child priorities underneath it, like this training program, I can click and I can see those child priorities because this uh, parent priority, excuse me, if you'll notice, it is tied to this annual initiative. This priority, if I look into it and I click edit, it is tied to that annual initiative because it is through that first annual or that first parent priority. Okay. So the overview in your annual initiatives is showing you this is the work that I'm doing to get to those those larger goals. But to see all of the details of that, you will have to go into that individual priority. Okay. Great question. Thanks. Any other questions based around how we uh, and we'll, we'll go into making sure that you know how to connect those priorities uh, here in a second. But any questions mm -hmm. on annual initiatives, how we view them? Can you review what those tabs are at the top of each of those cards? These? Yes. Yes. So uh, if you hover over them, it's going to tell you what the name of this is. So this is a company priority. 
Okay. Showing that this is something that everyone in the company needs to be focused on. So each person, whether they are uh, a part of a child priority, they have a task assigned to this, or they're just a part of the company, this is something that the entire company is putting effort into over this next quarter to make progress on this annual initiative. This is going to show that this priority is a roll-up priority. So it's giving you the type of priority that it is, either roll-up, task-driven, or KPI. And then it's also going to show you that there are four child priorities underneath it so that you see this training program to decrease employee onboarding time to two months. You have a lot more detail available to you in your priorities page that you can go and check out because there's other things underneath it that are adding to that 67% progress. Whereas if I go to my restructure onboarding, I can see this is a task-driven priority. So it's showing me that I am five out of six tasks complete, equaling a total of 83%. And then again, that there's one child priority underneath this priority, making me understand that this 83% is coming from that child priority as well as the tasks assigned to it. Again, it's showing me the type of priority. This is a KPI. There are no child priorities attached to it. This is as well a KPI priority, and so is this one. What's the significance of the different color for the uh, KPI priority on that third card? This one? Yes. It's just showing you that it's a KPI priority. It's just an easy visualization to see that that's a separate type of KPI or a separate type of priority. Yeah, but it, it's, a, it's a green tab as opposed to a gray tab. Yes, that's just visually showing you that it's a KPI. Uh, rather than, oh, it's a user-driven status, excuse me. User-driven, okay. Got it. So these gray are showing you that this um, percentage complete is from the computer. It's being calculated through the system. The priority status of this one is being user-driven. So it's showing in the green because the user is showing it in the green. It's not necessarily because this calculation from the computer is showing it through the time period as being 60% complete. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes. Great question. What other questions do we have? Before I move on, and we're going to talk about how to get your priorities connected to these annual initiatives. Awesome. So remember that this annual initiative section in your left-hand column is derived from the one-page strategic plan. So the one-year key initiative section is where you can add in new initiatives, you can edit your existing ones, or you can delete them. So let's say after uh, we're in what, the end of Q2? closing in on the end of Q2 of, of 2023. This automated proposal process, we haven't gotten very much done. We've only had one priority connected to it. This is something that in our, our quarterly planning session, we've decided this is no longer a key initiative for us. This isn't something that we're gonna be focused on this year. We're gonna put all of our efforts into our hiring and onboarding processes and ensuring every team member understands and lives our core value and purposes. So if I'd like to, I can come and just delete this and it's going to fully delete it. So this is in three different time periods. This annual initiative has been running from time period one, two, and three that I have in my system. If I click fully delete, it's going to fully delete it from every single time period, not just this one. And, so but you're, sure. going to lose, you're going to lose the historical effort that you put against that. And so it's going to be not accurately reflecting the, the work that you spent in those previous periods. Yes. Now it's going to delete the annual initiative. It's not going to delete the priorities. So you'll still see the work that you did in your priorities page, oh, okay. but this annual initiative is going to be deleted from all three time periods. Okay. Because it has priorities that were connected in each of those. So because it was started on 12-4, this priority that is connected to it has been copied over into three different time periods, showing me that I have work done on that in three time periods. So if I delete this, it's deleting it from all three. But if you would like to delete an annual initiative, let's say, again, you've decided that you're not working on this automated proposal process anymore. 
you can view the information that's connected here. But again, to delete it fully, you're going to need to go to your strategy tab, your one page plan, go to your one year section and delete it from this key initiatives page. You can edit the one the key initiative by clicking this pencil icon. So I can just edit the name of it, make sure that I save. If I'm changing this to say a little bit, give more detail, or if we're kind of revamping the way that we're working with this, I can always edit that from here. I can also edit from this annual initiatives page on the left-hand side. I can just click into edit and then make sure I save. Any questions on that? All right, so the last thing we're gonna go over is how to get these priorities to attach to your annual initiatives. So in your strategy tab, you and your team have gone over this quarter, what we're working on. We've put in our actions where we wanna to get to, and, oh, sorry, your one year. We put in our goals for what we wanna do this year. We're now, we have our key, our key initiatives put in. These are the three key initiatives that we're working on. Now we need to actually attach what we're doing this quarter these next three months, how are we going to actively put work into getting closer to achieving full 100% on each three of these annual initiatives? So I'm gonna click my priorities page. Here, it's gonna show me my current time period. So I'm running from March to end of June. In here, I have company priorities that everybody's working on and I can tie any priority to an annual initiative. So even if it's not a company priority, let's say this is these closed 300 new opportunities, it's still being, it's still work that's being added to that annual initiative. It's getting me closer to that end goal for the year. So I can click on any of my existing priorities to edit, click these three dots at the right, click edit priority, and then you'll see the annual initiative section here. I can select an annual initiative that's already created in the system. So I can't create a new one from this, this priorities page. I will have to make sure the annual initiative is created in the system before I can connect something to it. But if I'd like to, I can say, okay, to ensure every team member understands and lives our core values, this is this close 300 new opportunities is right in line with our core values. I'm gonna align this to this annual initiative. So now when I click save, if I go back to my annual initiatives page and I go to my ensure every team member, I'm going to see that close 300 new opportunities now as a part of the overall progress of this annual initiative. You can do that with any type of priority. So it doesn't have to be a roll up. It doesn't have to be a KPI or a uh, task driven priority. You can do any type of priority that is then assigned to this time period. You can also go back. So let's say last time period, I had an in, I had a priority that I was working on. This is a sandbox, so I don't have anything in my my past time period. So if I had a priority that I wanted to add and say this is just a test from last period, I can also attach priorities from previous time periods to these annual initiatives. So now I have this, and now when I go to my annual initiatives page. This is also going to show up under last time period. Even though that's in a prior year. So this is the this is the time period from oh, it overlaps my previous the, time period. Oh, if it didn't overlap the current year, in other words, if it ended, if your previous quarter ended on 1231, you wouldn't be able to do that, right? I I don't believe so, but I think it is based off of your so let's say we start our year in an odd time, right? So because this started in 2022, technically some people's annual years aren't necessarily on a no. calendar basis. Right, right, gotcha. So it's not going to cut you off and say, no, you can't do that because it's not in the same calendar year because you might be running off a fiscal year that's slightly different, different than January 1st to December 31st. Got it, yeah, good point. So it's based off of your connection that you're choosing. It's not necessarily based off of a calendar. Got it. Great question. 
So that is something to note though, that as you're going through, if you're connecting annual initiatives, make sure that you're actually in the fiscal year that you're paying attention to. So if your fiscal year runs from June, 2023 to June, 2024, make sure that the year that you're working from the one page strategic plan in your one page strategic plan, that your uh, the information in here is correct. So if my BHAG is running off of this, or if my three to five year goals, I can make sure that my three to five years goals, I say this is from 2023 to 2028. So you can delineate that here to make sure that you know the exact dates that you're working off of. Same with your one year. Great question. What other questions do we have about annual initiatives, connecting things to your annual initiatives, how you utilize them, any best practices? We can also open up the floor to anything else that you have questions on. I don't see that learn button on the left menu on my dropdown, on my, on my left menu under metrics. It says suggestions, metrics, then there's a learn button, yeah. So this is um, because I'm on a sandbox account. On oh, a sandbox, okay, not a regular account. Got yep. It. So because I'm on a sandbox, it's assuming that you are not a fully paid account user, and that's showing you if you want to learn more about a line. Here's our onboarding resources. Here are some ways that you can get a little bit more out of learning about a line, getting into a coach-led course, things that will give you a little more information if you're not a current user and would like to learn more or would like to get a little bit more information before activating an account. Got it. Great question. As a sandbox user and a regular user though, you do always have access to our Align Academy. So this question mark bubble, is gonna take you to the same academy, giving you the opportunity to see all of those resources we talked about previously. Right. Thank you. Of course. Well, friends, I am out. Uh, Alexander, if you have any additional information on annual initiatives that you'd like to add in, I'm happy to hear them. Um, I'm going to stay on for just a few more minutes, giving people the opportunity to ask any questions that they have, uh, get into a little bit more further functionality. If you're like, Carly, I love annual initiatives, but I'd love to learn more about tasks or priorities or the top priority calendar, feel free to ask any questions about anything in the system. Awesome. Well, you thank the, everyone so much. I'm sorry, Bill. For what you're going to cover next week. That I'm yes. Miss. So you'll find that under our Align Academy. Why aren't you clicking? If you, sorry, my Zoom is in the way. If you go to our training and support or our learning, or sorry, excuse me, under culture, we have a learning cal calendar. This is going to show you the upcoming opportunities that you have to learn and align. So we've got our office hours and I think we have um, ideas for the next three weeks. We have others planned out. We just have not updated our learning calendar for the 24th and 20, 31st yet. But next week we will be covering daily huddles. And then in our office hours, the, pre the following week on the 17th, we will be going over other huddles. So making sure you understand the different sections that are entailed in those, the best practices for hosting a daily meeting versus a weekly or a monthly meeting. Uh, and then of course, opening up questions as to how to best utilize and customize Customize those for individual teams. Great. Awesome. Well, thank you all so much for joining us today. We are always happy to have you at office hours. Please tell your friends if you have others in your account that are curious about something, they don't know about a certain feature, they're more than welcome to join us. Uh, Office Hours is open to all users within a line. If you have people that are interested in learning more, 
or they don't necessarily understand exactly what they should be doing in a line, this is a wonderful resource for new users. We also, in our learning calendar, we have our Basics 101 class. This is for brand new people who have never touched the system before. They don't know what a huddle is. They're not sure how to use priorities. They don't know what a task is. This goes over the basic functionality of what is a line, why am I using it, and what are the basic things I need to know to get myself functional on the system. Whereas our office hours, we tend to dive a little de bit deeper into some unknown functionalities, some a little bit more higher level or in-depth opportunities that you have in the system. Fantastic. Well, I will give about one more minute for questions. Otherwise, thank you all so much for joining us. You have a fantastic rest of your week, and I hope to see you all again next weekend. Or next week, sorry, not next weekend. Thanks, Bill. Yep, thank you. Thanks, Alexander. Thanks, y'all. You have a great rest of your day, and we will talk to you next week.